Hey, I'm Peter Bukowski, host of the Locked On Today podcast. Trying to stay on top of every big story in sports is a full-time job. I know because it is my full-time job, but it's not yours. That's why we have a network of local experts ready to give you the inside scoop on everything you truly need to know in the sports world. And we do it every day to make sure you're always caught up on the latest and greatest in sports. Listen to the Locked On Today podcast every day on the Odyssey app or wherever you get podcasts. What's up, everyone? I'm Carmelo Anthony. And while you may know me as a basketball player, there's a whole lot more I'm ready to talk about. That's why I started What's in Your Glass, a show where we'll sit down for a glass of wine and a conversation with the biggest names in sports, music, media, and entertainment. Listen and follow What's in Your Glass, a presentation of Cadence 13 and Creative 7 with me, Carmelo Anthony. Now, for free, on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Odyssey, or wherever you get your podcasts. It's Talking Golf with Ann Liguori on The Fan. Welcome back to Talking Golf with Ann Liguori. So glad you're joining us this morning. Hope you have a great start to the day so far. And we go up to Brooklawn Country Club in Fairfield, Connecticut, and say hello to longtime golf journalist, author, Colleague and friend, Ron Syrak. Good morning, Ron. Welcome back to the show. Uh, thanks for having me on, Ann, and it's uh, great to be back in the New York area. A lot of fun to be back here. Lots going on in the New York metropolitan area, and gosh, Ron, this is what, your 187th major championship? That's unbelievable. <laughs> that you started it when you were 12, right? <laughs> that just means I'm an old guy. So, uh, But, uh, you know, yes, it, and uh, I've covered a lot of majors. And I'll tell you very quickly, this, this tournament, the senior, uh, the U.S. Uh, senior Women's Open has become a, a very special event because it's part sort of class reunion, college reunion, old rivals getting together. But then, boy, on Thursday morning when the bell sounds and they put that tee in the ground and they start keeping score for real, they all get their game face on. It's fun to watch. It's so much fun to watch, and uh, well, you're a behind-the-scenes kind of guy. What's the week been like for you? I mean, it's been so special. Talk a little bit about the, the, you know, the the crowds up there, and and what's been going on behind the scenes. Well, for me, I mean, one of the things that's that's fun for me is that uh, most of these players are players that that were on the regular tour when I first started covering golf. So (laughs) I go back a long way with a lot of these players, and, and and that's fun to be around. But uh, the other thing is they're very, very impressed with this golf course, Uh, you know, (laughs) particularly those players who are from Florida and from Arizona, they find out that one of the things that we do really, really well in the Northeast is hills and trees. That's right. (laughs) (laughs) And the first thing every player said to me when they, after they played their first practice round is, wow, that's quite a walk out there. And wow, the contours of the greens are awesome. You can't be past the hole on any green. So uh, it, it's fun to watch them uh, uh, appreciate these great Northeast golf courses. Absolutely. I mean, if you're playing a lot of golf in Florida, it's just so flat down there. And then you come up here, and it's so challenging with the slopes, not only on the greens, the contours, but also on the fairways. And uh, you have yep. to get used to hitting, hitting, you know, those awkward shots again. But um, the USGA has to be delighted with the reception that these senior women are getting. I was up there earlier in the week, and, and there were a lot of people up there. Yeah, I think they're really, really dis- uh, delighted with uh, the reception and the way uh, uh, both the fans uh, and the players have embraced this event. And I and they, you know, they can't couldn't be happier with the fact that um, 13 years after she retired, Annika Sornstam returns to competitive golf, and here she is leading the tournament going into Sunday. That's uh, uh, sort of the dream scenario that the U- USGA could have, and it's going to be really. Interesting to see um, uh, how she performs today. You know, it was clear to me. I saw her on the range, was talking to her Tuesday, looking at the swing, looking at the distance control from the irons. She's been working really hard to get ready for this. She's been she's been working her butt off to be prepared. But the one thing you can't practice is pressure, the pressure of competition. And she hasn't been in this situation in 13 years. So it'll be fascinating to see how she uh, how she performs today under that kind of pressure. You're talking about preparation. So what kind of preparation did Annika 
put into this U.S. Senior Women's Championship? Was she pretty much practicing at her home club? Was she playing some, you know, competitive uh, tournaments? I mean, you know, Matt, when you get back to competition like that, as you say, it's really a matter of being, you know, mentally tough. You have to, your, your game has to come back. But um, how much preparation did you really do? Yeah, she's been playing a lot of giggle golf lately. Her 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 son Will is ten years old, has really really gotten into golf, is competing in junior tournaments. So she would play with uh, with Will, with her husband Mike, and and but this year she decided she turned fifty last year, so she qualified for this tournament. When she decided she was going to play this tournament, and I've known Annika well enough, she does nothing halfway. So when she decided to play for this tournament, she decided to get ready. So. She played an LPGA event earlier this year, um, um, first one that she's played since 2008, and she made the cut there, which was a pretty impressive performance considering she hadn't been playing. Uh, she played in the celebrity division of the uh, Diamond Resorts Tournament of Champions. Uh, she played in a celebrity event in Tahoe. So she's, she's played uh, three or four events this year to get that, that feel of, of – competition when the score really counts, you know, when you're really writing your score down. But, uh, again, this is a USGA championship, and uh, that brings with it special pressure. Uh, she won the U.S. Women's Open three times, and I know her well enough to know that she would love to add a fourth USGA trophy to that uh, that trophy case at home. And if she wins this afternoon, Ron, she will earn a spot in next year's U.S. Women's Open at Pine Needles? Absolutely, yep. And uh, um, she, I was there in 1996 when she won the U.S. Women's Open at Pine Needles. In, in, in an unbook, she won by six strokes. She hit like 51 of 56 fairways. And at that time, uh, uh, she had won the 95 uh, U.S. Women's Open at the Broadmoor. That was her first victory on the LPGA. Then she won the 96 U.S. Women's Open. And I thought at that time, She's going to win this tournament six times in her career. She went another 10 years before she won the U.S. Women's Open again, and she, she won 2006 at Newport in Rhode Island. Um, and she had several heartbreaks in there. One, one uh, Prairie Dunes, Julie Inkster laid a little 66 on her on Sunday to beat her at the Orchards. Meg Mallon laid a 65 on her on Sunday to beat her. Uh, but so the USJ events have always been important to her, and it would be fun to see her back at, uh, at Pine Needles next year. Can you imagine if she wins today and if she then qualifies to, to win or to play in a U.S. Women's Open? I mean, she'll be obsessed with practicing, don't you think? <laughs> knowing, knowing Annika, she'll be really – she's so busy doing so many different things, right? But she's really to, – to go and play in a U.S. Women's Open, she'll probably have to spend a lot of time – you know, just to get out there and play, just to satisfy her, her the training regimen and she, she's probably used to. She's sort of got this added motivation right now, too, of where her two children are old enough to appreciate what mom what mom does or, you know, at least used to do. And, uh, you know, uh, so I, I think she wants to show the kids that uh, uh, how good mom was, you know, and that she can, she can still go out and do it. Uh, yes, there's no question in my mind – that, that if she if she wins here today and if she qualifies for next year's U.S. Open, we might see her play more LPGA events next year as a as a way of getting ready. And you have to think that very very secretly, the LPGA is rooting for that because they would like to have her out there. I, I, look, she's got 72 wins. Um, uh, Kathy Whitworth has 88. Mickey Wright has 82. 72 wins. I, 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 no one is ever going to come close to that number again. In the modern era, sure. you'd have to take Kari Webb's career and Julie Inkster's career together is 72 wins. And those are two Hall of Fame buyers. Yeah. 72 LPGA Tour titles, 10 major championships. And you mentioned her children, and, you know, uh, they're a bit older now, and they can really enjoy watching their mom, and uh, they flew up to, to, to be there this weekend. And I, I, there's a little bit of a parallel to Tiger, because Tiger came, yep. you know, when he came back from injury, and he played again and, you know, winning the Masters so magically. His kids were older and, and there to watch him. And, you know, you play for your kids so that they can actually see you while they're older and appreciate it, right? So I kind of see that parallel, don't you, with Annika? Yeah, there absolutely is. And, and I think in the case of both of them, being a parent um, in a lot of ways softened both of them uh, in a good way. 
you know, in both both uh, uh, Tagger and Annika, uh, they both uh, interact with the galleries. They 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 uh, in a different way than they did before, a more intimate way, because uh, they they interact with their kids in in, in that in that way. So uh, we, you see them still with that same competitive desire out there, but with a little bit added that sort of added softness of a parent that uh, uh, um, wasn't there before. What is the overall feeling with the players, particularly the older players uh, who probably feel, and I've heard some of the women say, hey, this, we should have had a senior championship years ago. Do you, are you hearing any of that with, from some of these players? A lot of them are so excited and appreciative to have this championship. What is it, in its third year now? But yeah. do you hear also from some of the older players who are saying, gosh, you know, why, why did it take so long to have this champ, senior championship? Well, there was a lot. Uh, there was a lot of that early on. In the first one, uh, which I was at at Chicago Golf Club, uh, uh, you know, even Mike Davis, uh, who was at that time CEO of the USGA, he referred to it as the "It's About Time" open. You know, and 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 that's absolutely right. And and, and in a way, um, uh, they missed the window. Uh, you know, when they started the Senior Open for men. Uh, Arnold Palmer, Jack Nicholas, Gary Player, Lee Trevino were all still playing. Sam Sneed was still playing. So they had a lot of star power out there. And, and with this tournament, they sort of missed that window where they could have had Nancy Lopez, Patty Sheehan, Pat Bradley, Amy Alcott, that whole, that whole generation. Some of those are still playing now, but, but, uh, um, they are too many years under the belt to really be competitive out here. But what I've seen in the three years that they've had this tournament, the fields are getting stronger every year. You know, this year they added Annika Sorenstam, Katrina Matthews, Pat Hurst, um, Michelle McGann, and, and every year that's going to happen. More players are going to be coming into the pipeline, and the fields are going to get stronger and stronger. Yes, they would have liked to have this tournament 30 or 40 years ago, but they're really, really happy that they have it now. And they're really happy that the USGA, with the way the USGA treats them this week, the tournament is run on a very first-class way. We've been at great, great golf courses. The, the first three have been played at Chicago Golf Club, Pinehurst, or Pine Needles, and now Brookline, and they're going to MCR uh, uh, in Ohio next. Um, and the players love the fact that they're treated like this is a USGA major championship. Absolutely. Jeff Poblarski is there with the USGA wellness team, and, you know, the women are getting the best in massage therapy and recovery yep. treatment. So they're, it's a really classy uh, championship, and they've pulled out all the all the highlights, which is great for the, for the women. Let's talk quickly before the show ends about Xander Schauffele. He won the gold medal in Olympic golf. Of course, it, it happened overnight, <laughs> yeah. but uh, finally, Xander Schauffele with the win, and uh, it, go USA! Right? It's just exciting. It, it wasn't easy for him. It was very stressful. But what are your thoughts about Xander Schauffele winning the gold medal? You know, it was funny. I, I was doing a show early in the year, uh, in, in like, and we were sort of previewing the upcoming season, and somebody asked me uh, who my favorite was going to be going into the Masters. And I said, I'm picking Xander Schauffele to win every major championship until he wins one, because he's going <laughs> to win one. You know, it just seems in, it seemed to me inevitable with him. For the last several years, he's been on the leaderboard at majors all the time. And uh, he didn't get a major, but he got a gold medal. And, and of course, you know, that argument will rage. And, and as golf uh, moves on and is in more Olympics, it's going to be more of a, of a debate as to how important that gold medal is relative to the major championships. You, 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 when you look at it, the Olympics only once every four years. There are 16 majors played in that time period. So there's 16 major trophies handed out and one gold medal. So it, it is a big deal, and uh, it was nice to you – know, Xander's one of the good guys out there, and it, it was nice to see him perform so well uh, this week there. And this would be great for his confidence, too. I mean, obviously, at the Masters, you know, that was just his, after he birdied 12, 13, 14, 15 at Augusta National. He, he what, triple bogeyed the 16th, and boom, he was done. But uh, it's so great to see Xander come back and, and win his first, what, title or, or anything yeah. since 2019. So congratulations to Xander Schauffele. Ron, you're always a pleasure to catch up with. Continued success. Have fun up there. And we'll be watching on the Golf Channel. Coverage starts at 2 p.m. this afternoon. 
Talk to you down the road, my friend. Thanks for having me on. Hey, we're the hosts of Pod Save America. Every week we break down the political news that makes us laugh, cry, and scream into the void with a conversation that's entertaining, informative, and hopefully useful. We try to be serious without taking ourselves too seriously because we all have to stay in the fight. Democracy is under attack, and there's a whole right-wing machine that's counting on the rest of us to give up and check out, and we can't let them win. So join us. New episodes of Pod Save America drop Mondays and Thursdays. Listen for free on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Odyssey, or wherever you get your podcasts. Odyssey now has hundreds of new exclusive music stations for you to discover your new summer soundtrack. Get moving with worthy workouts for a cardio sesh fueled by today's top artists. Hang in with your crew? Throw it back with picnic party for old school jams for your cookout. Or sail away with Odyssey's new yacht rock station, Jugger Yacht. There are hundreds of new exclusive stations to check out today. For summer barbecues, road trips, or relaxing poolside. For every mood, every interest, every passion. By Odyssey. Brought to you in part by Macy's and Geico. What's up, everyone? I'm Carmelo Anthony. And while you may know me as a basketball player, there's a whole lot more I'm ready to talk about. That's why I started What's in Your Glass, a show where we'll sit down for a glass of wine and a conversation with the biggest names in sports, music, media, and entertainment. Listen and follow What's in Your Glass, a presentation of Cadence 13 and Creative 7 with me, Carmelo Anthony. Now, for free, on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Odyssey, or wherever you get your podcasts.